Fabio, how you doing? What's going on, man? Good evening, everybody. Yeah, I'm doing good. We're ha we're really happy to have uh, Matthew here tonight. He's there in the background. You can't see him yet. We'll bring him in in a minute, but uh, um, he's here and he's ready to go. We're excited about that. <laughs> I want to give a big shout how do you out. Say Sorry, go ahead. Locked and loaded. Locked and loaded. <laughs> 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 It's like a from you think you asking me because I'm from the south. <laughs> <laughs> Get your guns. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. So uh, before we get started, we we always want to do this. Like when we get started, is to show a couple things from uh, some kind of crazy things from around the um, things that we've seen uh, over the over the. Uh, hold on, I've got a little Fabio talk for a second. I got a little problem here. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start out the show by talking about a couple of things that seem to be relevant at least for the week. Um, we come up with a couple of articles that we found actually pretty recently. The first one is this application that it's used that somebody came up with that it's used to capture objects in uh, real life and then bring them to photoshop in augmented reality jason yeah. do you have a video there should be a I've, video from petapixel i've got it now yeah that's can. what i was trying to work on in the background yeah but hold on let me put that up all right um that is actually amazing i mean yeah this is really crazy i can i can already see the 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 limitations when using this tool Hold on. For some reason on the live stream, it's not working. Hold on. Let me, uh, I can see it. It's not, it's not right. Hold on guys. Just get, bear with me for a sec and I will fix this. But now it looks okay. On the stream. Is it okay? Oh yeah, there yeah, it is. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. Okay. Here we go. Just scroll down to the video yeah. so that the so, video can play and people can yeah, see what it is. This is a really crazy thing. It almost at first it looked like it was fake. I mean, people were asking, "Hey, what is going on?" I actually still don't quite understand how he got this. How he got this like in the to come onto the computer? How does he do this? Is it like over the over the a Bluetooth connection or Wi-Fi or something? Like onto the, you know what I mean? I have no idea. I have no idea. It would be very interesting to to find out, of course. But to me, it's very interesting how, you know, things like cell phones are getting more and more integrated in the workflow of a designer, right? And I think that the, the beautiful thing about this type of implementation is that there is no sending, there is no email it and then download it and then find it in the phone. You know, it's like, yeah. literally copy and paste and it's super fast and i don't know i i want to believe the video because you know nowadays with the internet you never know what uh if things are right or uh if they're uh, a lie yeah i know i mean but anyway i was already i was already like thinking of like all the possible implementations and obviously you know this is a very specific tool yeah. that was designed to to work in this way you know if you're doing something like this and you're outside i'm guessing that you can actually save things in your phone and then paste them later on in photoshop because you wouldn't go outside with a computer <laughs> and then take yeah. a picture of a phone booth and then overlay <laughs> it on photoshop <laughs> yeah but I, th I think it's also interesting uh that if you look, if you go and look into the how he's done it a little bit, it's using like AI to and machine learning to like also yes. cut out the objects. But this and is only this kinda, is only to recognize the object. Yeah, I know, but it's pretty amazing that what they can what you can achieve now, you know, what kind of sharp edges you can achieve on uh, sort of crazy like Yeah, dude, but uh, this was already done by Jin Yang a couple of years ago with hot dog and not hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the first, yeah. <laughs> 
um, and then th there's another thing. I'm an Octane user, and so I'm always in the Octane group. And I noticed one day that um, Jules Erbach, the, the the guy who's the CEO of, of Octane, he or oh, of Otoy, he posted. He's always talking about the development of octane x for mac because it's a big deal a lot of people nobody's using macs anymore for using octane because you have to have nvidia you know uh, gpus and so on so it's been a big discussion always and so they were using metal or something to uh, write the new code for octane on 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 mac uh, and he posted a crazy video let me let me pull that up because i still haven't seen it it's crazy you'll see it right now <laughs> um so this this video is, let me get this pulled up. This was posted there and this is apparently, and, and people were even asking about it in the comments because it's so, it's so crazy, you know. Um, apparently it's running on an iPhone. It's running on iOS. So if you can see this now, this is like it, I can see it. This is the program running, uh, like almost. It's I mean, it's not real time, but it's like it's it's so fast, and people were just like, "This can't be real," you know. Like this is this is some kind of super optimized scene that's you know been made just to be used here, but it's not. It's actually so Octane has its own format, so O O R B X, I believe, which you can use like you can export it from any dcc and then put it into their own uh, octane standalone renderer and use it right like you can just do it like that you can also use the standalone renderer to do things like materials and everything else but this is just a regular file from that system it's really crazy i mean it's like uh, and then you know these are just screenshots but here here's here's an actual shot of the phone and him moving it around you know Can you yeah, see this, Bobby? Crazy. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, I mean, and then today he posted another one. This was that was actually a, a couple of weeks ago. And today he played. He just posted another one, which is I mean, it's it's basically the same thing, but uh, it was on May. I guess on the fourth, he posted this. But he's changing to like you know the sun, uh, the position of the thing, wherever it is. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, but does it mean that I could make a render farm using like a bunch of phones? Apparently, yes. That's what that's what uh, people were saying, you know. But um, it's still com it's still a little bit unclear about what's going on there. But uh, apparently, it's running natively, like on the on the thing using the processor and the GPU, and it's using metal to like do the rendering processes. It's crazy. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is how things are progressing, right? Like so fast. And the size of things that we can use to process with, or I mean, it's just a phone. So I mean, it's a, that's how that's a computer now. So um, yeah. anyway, we just wanted to show you guys that I think it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, and now I think it's time to to bring on our guest, to bring Matthew. Yeah, that's what up. people came here for. Exactly. So Matthew, are you ready to join us? As <laughs> as ready as I'll so ever be. We invite you out of the green room Mr. now. Bannister. <laughs> Matthew, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you gents doing? Good. Doing good. Fantastic now that we get to talk to you. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying your um, your office there. Is this your home office, I guess? Uh, yeah, this is, um, yeah, this is just a little room that I have that I work in and um, record music in. So yeah, it's my little, it's my little space. I like in, the wall. I'm, I'm in Miami Beach at the moment. Ah, okay. So you're not in New York at the moment. All right. No, thankfully. Um, yeah, I'm that, not in New that, York. At the moment. I, I wouldn't imagine that would be great to be there at the moment. It's a uh, yeah. It's a very dense place, and that's that's a problem, isn't it, at the time? Well, yeah. It's just. I mean, in Miami Beach, we've. It's just got more room here. I've actually been able to get out and and you know, go for a jog every day which would be, I think, pretty difficult in Brooklyn. Um, one could do it, obviously, but I just wouldn't want to be doing it. So, But how are you, gents? 
all good on our end, Matthew. You've, so you've got, very, you've got a very bright light in front of you, Fabio. Could I potentially try and relight you? You're such a handsome man, and it's, it's yeah, it's, <laughs> he's got kind of it's, blown out. He's got his no, screen on one hundred percent white. Oh, there you go. That's, that's there you go. Enough. There we enough. go. I see you look better. This should be better. So, Matthew, there is a tradition that we have started a long, long time ago, last week, um, <laughs> which is to ask five burning questions to our guests. And we do that to break the ice. Jason, have you prepared five burning questions? Oh, you want me to do it? I'll are, do they it the same, are they the same questions every week? Or no, no, obviously not. No, they all change. You to be completely unprepared for this. <laughs> It's nothing. Okay. Don't nothing to worry about. We're not going to embarrass you or anything. <laughs> this we're not. We're not it's those a, kind of guys. One or the other question. <laughs> um, okay, and they're just they're just simple questions. It's you get two options and you have to pick one. I'm going to go fast. You have to pick one fast. Okay. Super easy. You ready? Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Hot dogs or hamburgers? Hamburgers. Chinos or jeans? Jeans. Subway or bike? Bike. Okay. Uh, movies or TV? Movies. And early bird or night owl? Early bird. Great. So I think it's good. I, I we... would have said. <laughs> I mean, was, dude, what kind of ice did we break guy. there? I'm not. I, uh, now we know some a few more things about you. You know, I was expecting something more along the lines of <laughs> I don't know, Sean Connery or Roger Moore. Um, Ooh, yeah, that, that's was, a, we're going to use that one though. That's a great question. <laughs> you know, the guest yeah. next week. <laughs> now, actually, I want to hear what you think was about it, that. Was like you know, like E minor or A major. <laughs> you know, like yeah. But you know, I mean, Mike Golden asks <laughs> whether or not Mike you do one. own a pair of chinos. <laughs> own a pair of chinos? Fuck no. <laughs> See, some of the questions we think we know the answer already. I I, I have these. I have these. Um, I have these kind of. My wife makes fun of me. I have these kind of disgraceful, lightweight, sort of, um, sporting, kind of. They're almost like like outdoory kind of fishing wear trousers that i wear in miami because it's so hot here you can't wear jeans so i have these kind of um but they're not they're not chino-y no not doing the chino <laughs> thing although i suppose i've got some very dark black or blue trousers that might be in the chino aisle <laughs> maybe yeah. j crew's going out of business apparently so oh really everybody's um yeah, we, apparently. Which so, J. J. Crew. Crew. So, so oh, everybody okay. better stock up on their chinos now because. Yeah, but can't you just like run over to Banana chinos. Republic, you know, if you need to? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, J. Crew, that's bringing back memories. It's like it was a cattle, it was like mainly with the catalog back in the day, at least where I'm from, because there weren't any stores. In New York, there were store. there were a couple, there was a J. Crew store, I think, but. Where I'm yeah. from, there was nothing. <laughs> you should have had like Jordash or Levi's. <laughs> you know? Do you remember Jordash? Yeah, those I do. Some, those were some cool jeans. <laughs> you have to be an hearing... you have to be an old fucker to remember those. Like. Hearing Tel Aviv, I basically optimized my wardrobe just to wear shorts. So I keep them so, on rotation. So, yeah. Okay. So what are, what are we going to talk about here? I'm kind of worried about that we might end up talking about chinos for an hour, and I will end up shooting myself. That's uh. So I I, I have a question for you, <laughs> and this is absolutely part of the plan. Matthew, do you remember the last time that you laughed so hard that you almost cried? I have I have those I have those quite often with my wife. She's absolutely hilarious. So um it's probably probably in the last couple of weeks there's something that she's done um that 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 made me giggle and cry. Um but 
No, I, I'm, I'm not sure I remember a specific one, but yeah. we have lots of laughs. I mean, uh, our, uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's hilarious. So I'm very lucky. That's great, especially I now. Really, I really like <laughs> to hear that. Yeah. Like right now, you know, in this last couple months. <laughs> yeah. You know that we're we're those we're are like the best times the time. to share with the those are the best times to share you know with a with a partner i mean i know people that are together and they have a very serious known laughing relationship and i'm i really ask myself how do they make it through the day like my wife and i we just laugh continuously yeah, and yeah. So, if you can't laugh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have made it through this lockdown if it wasn't just for being able to have a good giggle the whole time. Um, you got to laugh, but it's you know, it's this is this this has started to feel kind of normal. I, I can't really remember what it's like to sort of get up and go places. It seems like such a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But um, that is really weird. Yeah, can't complain though. I mean, it's you know, healthy. Don't but don't you miss it? Going outside? Can't complain. <laughs> I miss, Actually, I miss, with me, it's the opposite. I miss going out to eat. Like, I have to say, that's like the one thing that I'm missing the most. It's like every now and yeah. then going with, with uh, my wife and kids and going to have something to eat at a restaurant. That's a little bit yeah, strange. Well, yeah, it's, it, yeah, eating at home, we tend to eat really healthy. And yeah. I'm kind of craving going <laughs> to a restaurant and ordering something that I shouldn't order. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, do you do you eat healthy by choice, like because you like doing it, or is it your wife imposing it on you? <laughs> no, we, we, it's just if you cook at home, you just tend to eat more healthy. I think. How? You know, like, explain that to me. I make every you, meal. It's well, been a seven-course <laughs> meal. Have you worked in a restaurant? <laughs> I did. I used to be a chef. <laughs> Okay, so you see what goes in the food. It's just like if it's, you know, if it's salt, more butter, more salt, taste, a little bit more yep. butter, put some olive oil on it. Okay, it's ready to go. Fire it, you know. <laughs> but, so, but you just don't do that at home. So you're just naturally eating, um, I think, more healthy. But, you know, the thing is that there is a difference between the food that you might have been accustomed growing up with and the Italian food that my father and my mom were feeding me. Because, like, as a kid, they were continuously afraid of the fact that I might die because I did not eat enough. And so <laughs> we always had, like, at least bruschetta before the pasta, and then you would have the pasta, and then a little bit of meat because you do need the meat, let's face it. <laughs> then there is a salad because if you eat the meat without the salad, you cannot digest it. And then you got to have a little bit of cheese because that's what makes the meal complete right and as of now i'm slowly turning into my father and that's how i cook for my wife <laughs> <laughs> and it has been like this for like two and a half months now plus you know he worked well, in a restaurant so he's making it like he's making it in the restaurant <laughs> in, in that, in that, yeah in that case i think that we we eat very healthfully <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's funny i haven't been uh we, I mean, it's it's an interesting thing, you know, to be around the kids and my wife so much because my wife works, you know, she has a job in Vienna, but she's been working here now for maybe two months at home, which is very unusual. Like I, I'm working here and I was already working here. So we're both sitting here and the kids are here all day. And I mean, we've never had this many meals together ever in this kind of period of time, even when they were little, I don't think, you know, it's, it's so many, it's every day, you know, twice a day, uh, breakfast. Usually have, you had any, have you had any FaceTime meals yet? Any FaceTime meals? No. <laughs> yeah. Cause my, my parents actually live two floors, um, above us yeah. and we live in a, in a condominium building and they live in the same building, but I'm, you know, I'm, I, we're, we're naturally trying to not, spend physical time my parents are in their in, in their mid 80s um and if and i do go for a jog every day i have been and there's quite a few people out so I try and minimize that but on sunday always go and we make a meal and then we get the facetime going and we actually have a meal over facetime which is it that's become kind of our kind of a normal schedule now it's kind of nice that's a that's a cool idea though 
we we live we yeah. live just outside of vienna so we have a house and a garden and my wife's parents live next door so we've been like able to spend time with them outside you know sitting around in the garden at a distance which is really nice um and we've actually had a couple meals yeah. now where we sat kind of far away from each other but we were all together we could still talk and that's been a nice thing as well that we've at least been able to still see them um and not we you know if we lived in apartments it would have been a more complicated yeah where is this all going though i mean matthew it's... let me ask you what? i wanna <laughs> uh, sorry sorry if i'm interrupting you but i'm Mr. fabio let me ask you yeah there you go <laughs> yes that's that's what i do <laughs> you see I, I see all these like the instruments around you and i see the microphone and i know that you're a, a incredible musician oh, i'm you. dying to ask you about you know the connection between your professional life and making music is it is there any way that you can open up a little bit about the way you write music and how your professional life has had an influence or vice versa maybe your music has had an influence <laughs> that's a pretty on your good professional question. life well um i mean the music is really no different in lots of ways to to being to being very involved with arch fears you know, I think a lot of people, that's their creative outlet. And while I'm incredibly passionate about Arch Fizz, is you know, I I was talking, I was talking with you, Fabio, I mean, I haven't opened up a, you know, I haven't opened up Mac since probably 2003. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't make Arch Fizz. My creative outlet is music. Um, for whatever reason i i i found i find music um i find music endlessly challenging so the relationship between mm -hmm. my music and my professional life is probably based around the level of stress that that kind of comes with um running a creative agency it's it's you know there's a lot of moving parts it's very stressful and so the music is kind of a counterbalance for me it's a counterbalance for that it's a it's a complete escape i mean i see there's lots of you know and you've been doing these challenges which are all kind of they're kind of you know they're all sort of sci-fi and kind of geeky and and fun and i get the sense that that's very much kind of therapy and escape for some people to create those visuals they create worlds that are different than the worlds in which they inhabit um making music i think can be very much like that you can create you can create a kind of a world which is a musical world which is which is yours so did you start to produce more music as you stop working in 3ds max because you were too busy to no, be involved no, no, in production no. or I, I wouldn't say that i mean i i mean when we started dbox we were really we were kind of a band there was a group of us two of the other founders and then some friends from college we were in a band and we were in new york and that was kind of our priority um and then dbox took over really and there was a long period when i when i when i wasn't making music and then I've kind of I've kind of used music I think since around 2010 the last decade I've used it as a form of therapy really you know and I and I've spoken a little bit about that in the past is you know I music has been a very um it's been a very important part of um of getting sober too I, you know this summer this summer I'll be sober for 6 years and so the, writing the music and the music in many ways being about that being about that is um yeah it's it's it, that's very related i don't know how much you want to expose of that side of your life because i also have questions that you know i meant to ask you simply not because i'm curious myself but because I know that so many people that work in this field, they go through uh, an evolutionary struggle 
and some people they're not that lucky and they have to go and find comfort in things like you know alcohol and i've had conversations actually over the past few weeks with people that uh, also had even bigger issues you know with like substance abuse and so on and so forth mm. and you know like um obviously the idea of us having these conversations is to find out a little bit about uh, the the life behind the images of the the people that have built this industry but nevertheless i think it is our duty to make sure that people understand that you know everybody goes through the same type of struggles right and it's not something that uh, because you find yourself in that situation you're a loser or somehow you're less yeah i mean it's it's, than... it's yeah I mean, that was that's kind of cool we went from chinos to addiction in what was it about nine minutes <laughs> well <laughs> that's what you get overload we're, talk, we're talking about absolutely nothing and now we're god whoa this is this is some heavy shit um yeah there's a lot of stigma that goes around addiction and and no matter you know you can go through you can go through an enormous amount of therapy and self-therapy and I can only speak from my own experience and that is you can be sober for quite for quite a long time I and mean, six years is a, you know coming up to six years is a long time but still even then there's a sense it's still kind of embarrassing you you do you do feel that as much as you you're as much as everybody tries to accept that it's it's not that that there's a certain weakness that if you if you fall to that you're weak so yeah that's a uh, that's that's tricky and i do and i do and i notice it i do notice it a lot in our industry um frankly you know you don't you don't need to if you open your eyes at d2 you can and the thing is is that you know and i if you've if you struggled with that it's almost like you know it's like vampires can spot other vampires mm -hmm. zombies can yeah. spot other zombies it's like in the movies where the bad guys and the which, and and I can see, I can see, I can see people that are struggling. And there's some people that you know they're incredibly happy and they're cheering, cheering beer. Let's have another one. Let's have another one. But I can see, I can see that I can see it's all not quite right. Um, and I think it's got a lot to do with, you know, the 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 industry we're in is really quite stressful. It's you you have to. I think that any 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 creative pursuit that um, you do with intensity is stressful because I think that it is, is and I don't like to use the word artist, but those that pursue being an artist are are and should be endlessly critical of themselves in this Sisyphean search to find what they're after, right? And that's one thing which is kind of like this thing that we're all kind of doing trying to find our our vision artistically but then if you're doing it commercially you you sort of you know you have to kind of reinvent yourself every project there's never a there's never a thing where you just where you get to work and you push the button at the factory that makes more things but isn't that why you know, we maybe may, Maybe we'll get there one day and uh, I'll, I'll probably be long gone by then when you just go and you just press a button and AI makes a, a visual for another AI to critique, to sell to another AI. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but isn't that, I mean, I it, think, it, it, yeah. This yeah, is that, when the shit is going to come down, you know, like. But, but it, yeah, and at that point, you don't need, I don't think you'll need people like us anyway anymore. Like that's. That's yeah, that's going to be a time when if if that's ever a thing there'll be might be people like us still around, but there'll be the people will come to us for something different. But I wanted to say that I think isn't that also though kind of how a lot of us probably ended up in this job is that we were searching for something we wanted to do this something extra. There wasn't. Um, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is that we weren't really happy with what we were doing previously because I know so many people who studied architecture who were doing this job. And yeah, I, it's, I but that's I'll, interesting. Yeah. That, that's another interesting topic. And, and I'm constantly, constantly learning from this industry every day. And, and you know, I've, I've, I, I watch it actually a lot, 
I, lo I watch it much more closely than I used to. There was, there was a period when I was quite involved in the industry and then the last recession came along and that, that was, a, that was, that was, that was tough. There was, there was not a lot of time to be focusing on what anybody else was doing. It was just like, get your blinders on and focus on you focus on your business. And I was also, you know, I was also focusing on me because of just rewind to the previous conversation. So I was, I didn't have a lot of time for the industry. Right. And I look at the industry a lot now and, and I don't get the sense that there's, I get the sense that there's a lot of architects, the people that studied architecture that ended up in arch fears. But I also get the sense that there's a hell of a lot of people that didn't study architecture that are in arch fears based on the kinds of things they even do when, um, faced with these challenges that, that, that you know, Fabio's, Fabio has been throwing out. It's, it seems that kind of a lot of people are maybe from, from various backgrounds. Yeah, and I think a lot of those people and those challenges as well, they might not even be doing ArcViz as a job. So they're probably not yeah. coming from an architecture. I mean, you can see it in some of the images that they are not, I think, because uh, I think ArcViz people generally kind of have a certain feeling about how to do images and what they want to do and there's usually a lot of kind of architecture or, or at least space is playing a big role in what whereas some other people who might be doing uh film stuff they're going to look at it in a different way concept wise or whatever um but fabio wouldn't you say that a lot of the people aren't aren't arc there are a few archivist people who aren't doing and not are non-archivist people in those challenges right yeah, so we're getting a lot of people that don't come from the architecture visualization industry doing these challenges, which is, to me, it's very motivating because, like, we have had people coming to the D2 that were not from the archivist industry that came, you know, to listen to, I don't know, um, Ashtorp or Beeple. And then they discovered the archivist industry. And they saw that there was a big community behind it. And then they joined in and they bought into the community because of the sense of community that it's a lot stronger, say, than, you know, the um, other industries which are overlapping or nearing the one of, of archivists. Um, also, I think we have a little bit of like um, a merit in this because, you know, like those who orbit around the D2 conference, they are more or less friends which are spread all over the world right yeah and so they talk to each other as friends and so having people coming inside the d2 and seeing that sense of camaraderie i think it's what brings people then towards architecture visualization yeah uh, just just before we move on from the previous conversation i would like to say that um just just to throw it out there i've got nothing against people having a good time with a drink you know, obviously, and um, oh, yeah, absolutely, and, and and I'm happy to I'm happy to drink with people. I just won't be drinking alcohol. <laughs> and um, also, um, on top of that, if if there's anybody out there that's watching um, this in the future who is struggling, um, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to talk to you, and um, I won't I won't. You know, I've got no solutions, but I'd be happy to talk. Sometimes the hardest thing is is talking to somebody, um, finding somebody to actually talk to about that if you are struggling with with something. So I just wanted to get that out of the that's, way. That's, that's very nice great. of you, Matthew. And, you know, like, uh, uh, seriously, I cannot stress it enough. I mean, you know, the goal of us doing these um, streams, it's always to show what happens when people get together without an agenda just to get a conversation going. And this is what happens when we get involved in the events where we go to, right? Of course, yeah. we go and watch the people speaking, but we love to just talk to people because that's what you... I, I honestly think that this is the best thing that you can do for your own personal development. Have people to talk to with which you can confront each other and compare each other and learn from each other. Mm. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, I, I agree with yeah. you, Fabio. Go to events. That's like the, the biggest thing. And I'm not saying it because we do an event. I'm saying it because... Well, it, we'll cancel. It so. basically, <laughs> so. But it, 
Yeah, and no, everybody did, right? <laughs> you can't do this right now. It's <laughs> sad. It's really sad because it's really important. And um, but I just know it from my own personal. I'll tell you the one thing yeah, that go ahead. the one thing at the last at the D two the last time is I did feel I felt sorry for uh, for Pure Blink who were who went first in the morning on the second day. It's always a problem. Yeah, because yeah. and again because it's because everybody had gone out and got hammered. <laughs> I felt that was a shame because 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 yeah. they actually they had they had such a good talk and they had such quality work and I, I was sitting in there as bright as a daisy obviously <laughs> <laughs> and um and the place was half full I know and a lot of people they traveled to Vienna to see great work and they missed it because the night before got in the way and I it's felt that was a bit choice. of a shame yeah it's uh, it's it's it too is bad their choice of course. It is too bad, though, and we always we should probably make an afternoon event. But I want to say we always have this problem because it's it's always hard to say to someone because the people know who are going to be speaking. It's always hard to say to someone, yeah. "I've got to put you at the in the morning on you know on Saturday," and they're like, "Okay, that's like the worst spot." <laughs> if you want to actually yeah. be in front of the people, it's the worst spot. Of course, sometimes people are like. Hey, I'm nervous anyway. It's perfect. I want to be like, <laughs> I don't want to have any people in the audience. That's Crickets. where you put them. Yeah. You know, that's that's who you have to put there. But yeah, it's too bad. But yeah, like Fabio said, it's they, they've decided. And, uh, you know, I think it also shows you, though, that a lot of the reason that people are coming to the event is to hang out with their friends and, and to have fun. But there, was, there, was, there was something that, that I don't know if because you, you were there and you helped. Um, but the 3 December was quite clever in the sense that the the party was very much on the last night after the last talk. And yes, they, yeah. they actually closed things down. They closed that bar down early on the Friday night mm -hmm. and the place was packed on Saturday morning. Yeah. Uh, I've had a conversation with them about it to them. It's a lot easier because people are mainly from Ukraine. And so, you know, they don't have to catch a plane to leave the day when the, the conference is over or the day after. That was a fun one. It was, it was a, fun. Was yeah. really it fun. was a beautiful event, I have to say. Like, uh, and was... luckily enough, you know, last year we had a lot of uh, talks in English. Um, it was amazing, I have to say. Like, probably this was, to me, the closest event to the D2 conference that I've ever attended to. It was, what do you cold. Think, it was cold in there, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah it's like the exact well, you know it's like <laughs> it was like the exact opposite of how the d2 used to be when it was uh still in the in the metropole not not the place from last year but the place before which i think you also were at right the the smaller venue we had yeah i remember 2000, 2018 the first the first day of the 2018 that was like that was like an oven in there. it was terrible yeah and that, that was our, i think it was the only complaint that we got from the D2 yeah. from people was it's just too damn hot in there but otherwise everything was fine yeah. but I feel like that was like the the opposite you know of our conference you go in December in Ukraine <laughs> and you're in a cold space yeah, yeah. that was like <laughs> Matthew do you remember the happiest moment of your archivist professional career happiest moment Oh dear, now you've really put me on the spot. <laughs> you you mean like a happiest moment of D-Box career? Yeah, like what I'm trying to understand is what it is that made you proud, what it is that made you say, Oh my god, all these tears and blood made it worth it, you know. I I do I really I get a lot of pleasure out of seeing people blossom. I do. Um, I get a lot of pleasure out of seeing people even blossom after they've left the box. Um, so that's nice to see that. And that gives me, that gives me the kind of um, feeling that lasts where any, whereas it seems like any victory any fleeting victory, I always, I don't enjoy it so much. It's like you win an award and, it, and then I kind of feel like, uh, did we deserve that? 
And then I'm always like, oh, we've got to do better. We've got to do better. But when you see somebody do well, when you see somebody blossom, whether they whether, whether that's internally and somebody just, you know, comes in and is quiet and sits in the corner and then suddenly six or seven years later, they're a partner, that feels really, really good. Or you have somebody that comes and learns and puts in a great shift and then goes off and then becomes their own thing. That feels good too. Um so I think that those those are the things that make me the happiest. Um, yeah. I don't think, yeah. Is that a good enough answer for you? I love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's funny, like the big awards and stuff, they, they're, they're great at the moment, but they just somehow they never... I remember when we won the Emmy, I was, I remember I was kind of like, I think I was really depressed at the time. And I remember thinking at the time, I remember thinking at the time that somehow maybe we didn't deserve it. And I've got over that recently because I mean, not later I did, because I realized a lot of the work that we put in to get ourselves in the position to actually be part of that project probably meant we maybe deserved it. I don't know. <laughs> but so the awards, it's not to, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, that, that those little moments seem to fleet and they go, but when you see people do well, that kind of tends to last um, better. Yeah. I think this has to do a lot with where you are in life as a person, right? My name it's is John this, Chambers. Uh, topic of like self actualization that when you have achieved everything that you can achieve, then you genuinely take pleasure in seeing other people succeeding right because then it's just a confirmation of the fact that what you have put into the ground sort of like a seed it has actually been growing into something and i think that i think that this is you, you know i always ask a question to the people that i interview which is do you ever uh, think about purpose in life and i think that very often people either overestimate or underestimate the idea of purpose. Sometimes all you have to do to feel gratified in life is to be of help to others and to expect nothing in exchange. And I think that when you go through a life that proves you with problems, with things that you have to overcome, when you realize that, then it becomes a little bit like a liber liberation in your soul. And talking to you, I've had this feeling many times in the past. It feels like you're that kind of person that is genuinely interested in seeing other blossoming because there is actual pleasure to, uh, to have had in that process. And maybe I'm just taking a wild stub in the dark here. No, and I'm just, I, I, mean, I think that's fair. I, I like to see people do well. Um, yeah, I like to see good work too, you know. I think that yeah, I think maybe that's for maybe that's why. Did the... you, have you seen that? Have you seen that program, Devs? No, what is this? Have I've heard other yet? people saying the TV yeah, show or should... something. Or... Yeah, you should watch it. It's one of those series things. Um, I just finished it last night. It's actually quite good, and I won't no spoilers, but you <laughs> you should watch it. But the the kind of the, this conversation after watching Devs. Um, it what is it about? Can you explain it to me? It's about the, What's the it about? Software developers? It's about, it's about it's about a tech company yeah. outside San Francisco where the 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 tech guy, the messiah, <laughs> um, is developing um, some pretty badass tech, and there's without any spoilers there's a kind of a group of people that get caught up in a riddle but the main thesis of it is based on um how life works and I, again i'm trying not to make this a spoiler how life works as a linear determined process or as a multiple life variation process i hope i haven't but watch it. It's it's. I, I thought it was very good. It's it's got some good. Um, it's got some good CG sets in it too. 
Is it a funny show or is it like drama or serious no, it's, show? It's, it, it's drama. It's pretty tense. I was Because kind I, of like... I, Nick yeah, Offerman me... is on it? What's that? Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman. Yeah, somebody mentioned yeah, that he's, he's a... good in it, yeah. Yeah, he's very good in it. He's a great actor. It's one of my he favorite actors. He reminds me so much of a client that I have at the moment. Um, <laughs> oh, really? They have, a, they, have almost, not... they have almost identical voices. They look nothing alike, but their voice is so similar. It's, it's just it's just shocking. <laughs> you should ask your cl client if he built his, his own canoe. <laughs> well, the client is actually a, is a tech giant, too. Um, or a, yeah, it was a, it's a major tech guy. Um, but anyhow, have a watch. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, that sounds I good. will, definitely. It's, I, I highly recommend it. I found Actually, it very this is a very good. This is a very good segue because I wanted to ask you: What is it usually that you enjoy to watch, and is there something that you're watching that can that drives a little bit of inspiration in the type of work that you guys try to do at work? Oh God, no! I I don't. I do. I I. I don't watch things like that. I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, the the last Star Wars I watched was Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> did you? Oh have, did you never God. see Return of the Jedi? <laughs> Is that the third one? Yeah. Is that the one with the Jabba the Hutt, the big? Yeah, and the Ewoks. I think I've seen bits and pieces <laughs> of that. <laughs> but I, but I don't, I don't watch, I don't watch stuff like like that you know i've never i've never seen the matrix no way you know I've, i've never seen the matrix yet yet on the imdb site i'm 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 credited as one of the people that came up with bullet time oh really and i've never seen the film <laughs> i've seen clips of it <laughs> So yeah, so I'm not. I don't watch. I don't watch things like that. But you gotta watch the the. You gotta watch the um the Matrix, at least the mm. first one. I don't the know the second and the third. <laughs> Why? I, I, See, I think didn't even know there was a second or a third. Oh yeah, there are. Yeah, I, it, the thing is, it's the I, first one. It's revolutionary. It's funny. Yeah, at the time, I, that's what I was gonna say though. At the time when I watched it originally, I remember thinking, "Man, this was just amazing." It blew me away. But you know, I've watched it again since then, and I wasn't as impressed. And I don't. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. I can't say that that's always the case with movies, right? Like that's not. It doesn't mean that that's always the case. It had nothing to do with the technology or anything of what they used. But I don't know. It's. I don't know. I felt that as I've grown older, it takes a shitload more to impress me. You know, like <laughs> you're just an old grumpy man. No, but it and I, but it makes me understand grumpy old men even better. You know, because I'm like, I, I'll watch stuff now, and I'll be like, you know, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> I am not. I am not going to let you justify your old man grumpiness. I'm not gonna take it. <laughs> I'm not justifying it. I'm you just know, telling you that's how it is, you know. <laughs> Ma Matthew, in the D2 dynamics, I am the little kid that runs around and screams and then, ah! and then Jason comes with a stick and he goes like, no, you're going to do that. Eh? And that's how it works. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, just gonna... <laughs> the things that I watch, I, I, I like to, I prefer, I watch things sort of murder mystery stuff, stuff with very little visual effects in it. If, if 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 I'm ever watching a film where I feel like the visual effects are, are like kind of a part of the film, it just for whatever reason I just it it turns me off a bit. I like it. I like it to be all invisible. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know about it. Yeah. Um, the reason I mentioned that that Devs has got some good sets is it's got good production design in the in a kind of a Ken Adams kind of production design kind of way. It's more there's some interesting design. That I'm assuming is that I'm assuming is CG. I doubt they built the sets. Um, it's pretty seamless stuff, which is good. You can't tell what's what. I mean, there's some aerial stuff of the building complex, which is obviously CG, but um, a lot of the interior shots, it's it's hard to see what's what's what. Yeah, at least it is for me. But I have to. You're talking about you know the production. guys. Let me just let me just interrupt you quickly because we have forgot completely to ask people from home. 
if they had any questions for Mr. Bannister, yeah, so think which about I, those I think they ask do. If you have something. But I just want to say real quick, because you were talking about production, you know, production design and the set stuff. And we were talking about that you haven't seen, you know, the more recent Star Wars, which you didn't miss anything. <laughs> I think you, you know, you didn't, you, you didn't have to see those, um, in my opinion, as an old man. Uh, but the, <laughs> I did watch The Mandalorian. And The Mandalorian is amazing. Like, this, this is in the Star Wars universe or whatever. And this is a really well done show. Um, it was a TV show, eight eight episodes, wasn't it? Or ten or something, eight episodes, I think. And this is where they've used this technology as well with, with the Unreal Engine and the, you know, on-set backgrounds where they're using it to light the people as well as shoot. You can shoot directly and have the backgrounds. You can adjust them on, on, on the fly as you need to on set. And if you know that, it's even more amazing because what they've done there, because when you see it, it's just like, this is really blowing me away. All of this stuff are, mm -hmm. was done in a studio. Uh, but it's not CG either because, I mean, it is, but it's like they actually shot it, though, like in the background. It's a really amazing mm. process, uh, but also the show was just good. I think it was a, a very well done thing. So it's not yeah. it's not like I can't be impressed anymore, but <laughs> it just has to be really good. I still good. haven't got around. <laughs> I still haven't got around watching The, the Mandalorian. It's That's good. Because you should watch in... it, yeah. Uh, but in Israel, we don't have access to Amazon Prime, the one that allows that's, us yeah. to. That's watch. on Amazon Prime. Should be right. No, it's on um, Disney Plus. That's the problem. Oh, it's it, Disney. Now you have this okay. in Austria now, but Disney Plus is like another. I mean, now everybody's going to have their own streaming now. So, yeah, I can't. Yeah. You can't do it. You can't have more. It's, it's crazy. In the yeah. end, because it's it's. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Do we want to even talk about it? Let's see if anybody has a question. I don't know if we want to talk about this Yeah, who's got a question? I mean, this <laughs> is... Streaming services, how they've fractured everything. Who's got a question? I don't think I was looking Nobody if someone has, a question. has something. I, I have a question. Okay, well, Matthew. So. Sorry, sorry. The <laughs> question to Matthew. Is that a cow from Atom Heart Mother? Yeah, it Heart is. Mother, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah it is. Atom Heart Mother, yes. <laughs> Shout. Atom Atom Heart Mother. Atom Heart Mother, yes. Matthew, what's the first thing that you're going to do when that was all from this lockdown? Sorry, that was from Vasil Vasil Matsola, the, the question. Which is the question? Uh, that, the question the, that the Fabio asked you. Oh, yeah. This is from Vasil. So Vasil and Andre are in the in the audience here watching. Oh, Vasil, hey, dude. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. I was assuming that you were watching the the, the chat. And, no, Andre's I, I on, and Andre's on too. Yeah, I guess they are both of them. Yeah, I saw them, I saw them both. They they said thanks for mentioning 3D Simber earlier. Big oh, shout out to the Submarina guys. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome um, event. Awesome dudes. Matthew, what's the first thing that you're going to do after this lockdown? gets a little bit better well it's i mean it's not it's going to be in stages isn't it i'm probably going to go somewhere with a mask on my face <laughs> at the moment I, you're really not going out at all no I, i'm i'm you know it's it's it it's i see my parents quite a bit and i don't want to bring it to them so i'm mm -hmm. being careful you know, um, yeah, so yeah, it's, I, I don't, I don't see this. I don't see this thing finishing. Like there's some kind of magic switch where it gets turned off. I think that, I think that this is going to go on for quite a long time. I, I'm afraid so as well, that it's not, it's not something that's going to go away. I mean, here in Austria, it's gotten a lot better and they are starting to open things back up, but you can feel it. You know, you see all the people getting back together and everything. And it seems like, um, the potential for it to like flare up again is quite high because the people I, from my feeling of seeing it so far, they don't really seem to be too worried about it. <laughs> you know, it's like mm, yeah. they're, they're out there like acting like nothing's going on. They're wearing masks, but I mean, otherwise they don't act like, I don't feel like they act like there's some problem. So we'll see how it goes. They, in Austria, it's been pretty good. I mean, they, they did, a, I think the government did a good job, but we'll see. 
if they have to close down yeah. again or hopefully not. I hope I hope people can can get their shit together. I mean, to, to I mean to answer your question, Fabi, it'd be nice to go for, go to a gig or something. But um, you know, it'd be nice to perform a gig, um, to to play in New York, to play to a group of people. But I honestly can't see that happening for a while. You know, it's it's not. Yeah, that's yeah, gonna be. I don't see that happening for a while. Unfortunately, for event people, this is like the the last thing that will happen large large groups yeah. of people together in one place yeah unfortunately so i see yeah. holiday banister says hello from england is that your sister <laughs> no that's my brother's um daughter okay hello hall <laughs> she she tuned into this yeah. god she must be, she must be <laughs> gotta say hi bored. she's watching you right now <laughs> oh dear <me. laughs> matthew people wanted to listen to your music what would you recommend them starting with? Track number one. <laughs> Where can they find it on Spotify? Is that how it's called? Yeah, you can find it on Spotify. And it's called track number one. I'm gonna Google it. No, it's uh, no, it's it, it, what I mean by that is just start at the beginning of the record. All right. <laughs> and it's yeah. the beautiful fear, correct? Is that the name? The beautiful yes. fear. Yeah, the first track is I'm called gonna... 1999. I'm going to look for it and then put a link to it on the uh So Holiday Holiday asks Holiday asks a question. She has a question for you. She said she asked uh, whose gig would you like to attend anyone alive or dead? So any oh, any wow. gig. Define That's a very gig. Good question. So holiday defined gig. We're gonna we're gonna need some more cl some clarification. Are we talking something small? Are we talking something music. huge? <laughs> I think he means music. That would be um, that would be. Uh... She's put you on the spot. I mean, it, would, it would it it would probably be it. I mean, this is like I don't know if I had to. God, that's that's impossible. That's really impossible. It's a, that's a hard one. It would either be 1972 Pink Floyd, mm -hmm. um, or it would be something like it would be something impossible, like Elvis Presley. You know. <laughs> well, dead um, or alive, it works. My mother yeah. was a huge Elvis or, Presley fan. She saw him like a couple times because he, you know, she's she was from Mississippi. He's from Mississippi. He started yeah, up there. It was she had crazy stories about it? About that or time it'd be Bowie maybe with a, with a spot, you know, with a, with the spiders, you know, with with Ronson and Co. Maybe that would be that would be a, a that would be a tough toss up between that and like seventy two, seventy three Pink Floyd. Yeah, I was wondering um, if you were going to say Bowie. Yeah, that, that I mean, I a, saw Bowie. I saw Bowie quite a few times, um, and he was godlike, absolutely mm. amazing. I saw him once um, um, out on Jones Beach in Long Island, and um, my friend had managed to blag basically second row center. <laughs> wow! So he wow. was he was kind of just he was just like there, right there, and. Um, Honestly, fully godlike. It, he was just incredible. Is that uh, is that the big amphitheater out there? The yeah, it's it's not an ideal place to see a gig. I actually saw him twice though. Because I've seen, I, um, I was there once as well when I lived in New York. We went, we I can't even remember who we saw honestly, but I, I th it's the it's that big amphitheater at the big outdoor place. Yeah, I believe I saw him twice there because I remember I saw one that was where it rained like hell, and then one where I was very close to the stage, but I could be conflating. I have to look that up. <laughs> I know that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a video of one of the gigs on, on YouTube and I can actually see myself in the crowd right in front of him. That's um, super cool. I've, seen some, I've been very lucky to see some, some, some incredible gigs. My brother dragged me to some, some remarkable gigs when I was very young. And now and you're saw, thankful I, for that. I saw Queen in 79, wow. which was a big one. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. 
we were right up the front. I actually shook friends with uh, shook hands with Freddie Mercury. Wow! Because <laughs> no we were, way. We were right. We were right up the front. We pushed our way all up the front. Um, yeah, that's really that's cool. kind of like, that is. This is one of the performers that I would have loved yeah. to meet or to see performing. Yeah, definitely. Freddie Mercury is such. Have you seen the? Have you watched the movie? I saw the movie, yeah. That's the a new joy. one, right? It was Did enjoyable. you like it? it? What, the 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 one where there's an actor playing them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was enjoyable. I've seen some good I... documentaries of Queen too. Yeah, that's the thing that to me like the the most remarkable thing was the story. Like so a lot of those things I did not know. And that movie that's the reason why I enjoyed that movie so much. And it was at um, at times it was like I really had like goosebumps, you know. There's also... some of those songs I remember yeah. them as a kid. Well, it's did the goose the goosebumps are the goosebumps are the is the, is the music. Mm-hmm. That's I mean I think music music can, can you know if I'm to be if I'm to be fair I you know I walked in the you know in the Pantheon I got goosebumps in the Pantheon you know as a piece of architecture that got me. Um, I'm not sure I've got goosebumps anywhere else from architecture. I've been incredibly blown away and impressed. I mean, I was in Villa La Roche. I had like a little moment where I was kind of like, it really hit me. Um, and in some other kind of cathedral spaces, I've been in awe. Um, in front of art, whether it be sculpture or painting, I've been very moved. I've been brought to the point where I've looked at a painting and it's almost, it's overwhelmed me so much that I've, I've almost got like an instant headache, but nothing, nothing quite tweaks you like music does. And when you put the right visual and music together, that can, that can stir emotions that visual can't do by itself. Yes. I totally agree. I, and, um, same here, I agree. Completely. And that's, that's the power of music. And, and I think that's why I'm so drawn to the challenge of actually making it. If you can, if you can make something that moves somebody, then you've accomplished something and you've, and, and you can kind of leave that behind too. I'm quite, I'm quite interested in leaving something behind. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of yeah, course. Definitely. Absolutely. But it's I mean, what, what I'm what I what I really interrupted you there is you know that that movie I'm assuming the goosebump mo goosebump moments were were about were moments in the film where the music was working in combination with a vis visual. Yes, absolutely. It wasn't just like you know the story in that movie builds up and then it climax with a song. Because the song, it's like the result of the story, right? Mm. And that was amazing. I I really, like, I remember I was really, like, so excited to watch this movie. And I don't know why. I mean, I like Queen. I'm not a very big fan. But the way the story was told, I thought it was really, really good. I'm a huge mm. fan of Queen. And they and I think that there's some... YouTube videos, uh, some of uh, some interviews with Freddie Mercury out there, like actual interviews with him. He's he's he was a brilliant guy, like and also talking. He was just amazing when he would talk to people. You know, like when people would interview him, mm. he's unbelievable in in front of the camera. He's so talking. sharp, so um, incredibly sharp. I have I want to I want to step off to the side though because we're talking about like this emotional response to music. And uh, I, have, of course, I get this as well. And the goosebump thing, I mean, I'm getting it right now because I'm thinking of something. It's crazy, actually. I'm thinking of something and it's making me like have a reaction. Um, do you know Princess Chelsea? Do you know this artist, Princess Chelsea? This Princess is, Chelsea. Look, I'm going to tell people, I'm going to tell you guys here something that I would normally probably not say. And I'm doing it live in front of these people, but because it's, it's almost embarrassing in a way. So Princess Chelsea, I found this one time on Spotify just by 
by accident because I was looking through music or whatever. And this is a, a woman who's from New Zealand. She works, uh, she has sometimes plays with a guy who's like also from there from New Zealand, you know, and she just started up with like playing the music on YouTube basically. And she became famous because of it, because it was, it's quite good music. It's really amazing. Her voice is amazing and everything else. And she would make her own videos. And there's a video out there of her. It's her singing a song and it's like, she's taken like footage of herself as she was growing up and kind of splicing it together with this song, which is very melancholy and sad. And I come, I, I get tears in my eyes every time I watch it. It is unbelievable. And I don't know why, like, it's like, because it's so melancholy. It's like this, it's talking about, you know, memory and like growing up and how things used to be. And then how maybe mm -hmm. things didn't work out. Like, I mean, it's like all intertwined and, it, it's such it's a crazy probably, I, I'd be, send it to me i'd be curious yeah C curious it's probably it's probably got to do with the kinds of chord progression that's in it in yeah, relationship to yeah. certain words that were are triggering emotions but it's the um, do you think it would give you goosebumps without the visual or the visual is also it's a very good song, but well. the visual is making it even more strong because of what it is that you're seeing. And it's super low, lo-fi, but it's also because it's it's basically home footage from her as a kid and like growing up and like all these different things. But it's crazy. It's it's one of and it's one of my favorite. It's the, one of the favorite things I've ever seen like that because it's so it makes me so like melancholy. I don't know. It's not like I want to be feeling that, but I I couldn't believe the response I had to it. And so I think this what we're talking about. This is really interesting. The topic. One of the things I like about music too is it's it's kind of it's a bit like a time capsule. There's certain records that it doesn't matter where or where I am when I put it on. It takes me back to a particular time in my life to yes. almost a space. Like I know where that sits in my life, uh, and I think that's really powerful powerful emotion for a piece of art to have on you as well absolutely yeah really special there's some music that i can't i don't even like to listen to anymore because it was from the time that i was studying architecture and it was like it what it takes me back to is being in the studio at two three in the morning tired as hell like hating myself because i wasn't finished with my work and it's like but if i listen to that i'm back there and i'm like oh god i can't listen it's like i can't listen to this music <laughs> so is how do i find that i need to look and see what the comments are so i've got this stuff on there. So. Miha said that he, he listened to your music and found it very moving Miha, hi yes. Miha. thanks for listening to my music i appreciate that and I'm I'm really glad you found it moving. That's awesome. Um, and Milan, yes, Freddie was an icon, definitely. Yeah, total icon. Unbelievable, and yeah, I don't know. It's it's just um, it's painful also to think of like the struggle that he had to go through because of all the stereotypes and you know the stigmatists that a few years back. Uh, they were on people, you know, having HIV or being openly homosexual. And, mm. you know, things like this nowadays, they they don't make news anymore, right? Mm. Yeah, it was different times back then. Um... Matthew, we've been going on for an hour and 13 minutes. Our yeah, we goal was to... Boring the pants off people by now. No, 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 no. I don't no, think no, so. No, 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 no. I think this was an, a fantastic think... talk, actually. The things we talked yeah, about. I don't, even know what, I don't even know what we talked about. We, we went from chinos to music. I'll always <laughs> remember the chinos question, though. Chinos or jeans? <laughs> well done, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> it's so out of left field, right? I mean, I don't know. It's yeah, totally out of left field. But um, yeah, thank you, Matthew. For, for those of you tuned in, thanks for tuning in and listening to us. Um, shoot the shit, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, Matthew, thank you so much for for you know taking the time to join us and to of do course. this. Um, I, I just, always... it was just it's just it. It's just nice seeing you guys and talking to you guys, whether we had anything um, exactly. that's, entertaining that's... to say or not. I just, maybe we shouldn't have done this live on YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> that's I'm what makes it so nice. Nah, it's a beautiful, man. <laughs> yeah. It was beautiful.
It's but uh, yeah, people loved it. It's uh, this is this is actually why we're we just you know decided to do this was to have these kind of conversations, like Fabio said earlier in the show, uh, like the kind of conversations you might have if you're just if you're actually hanging out with somebody in person. Um, it doesn't have yeah. to be specific. It shouldn't be like all planned. Um, and that's also the fun about doing it live is who knows what's going to come up. Yeah, and... it was, I think the last time I did one with Fabi, it was all about um, credit revolution. It's like, yeah, it, it was, you know, that's like, oh, we've got to get credit. We've got to get credit. And then it's like, then it's like this fucking pandemic comes along and we just like we've got to stay alive we've got to stay yeah. alive like, you know i was gonna I, the credit. I actually it's thought credit. i could ask you about it but i was like it's not why i mean it's like we'll get back to that right like that's a, we'll, we'll, you, get we'll get back to that to it, it is important but, it is important but like but you know yeah. and the economy is probably yes. um Matthew, again, the, the idea here is to really bring that sense of reality back into the community. Because don't get me wrong, when we do something, when we produce a piece of content, we do it with the intention of like getting it viewed. And if we want it to be viewed, it needs to be a positive, everything is good kind of piece of content. Instead, mm. by doing these talks, we just want to bring back a sense of like reality because at the moment that's what we need. We need to acknowledge the fact that everybody's going through a struggle, that everybody has been put against the wall and had to deal with this one way or another. And we just want to keep them company the same way as we would entertain each other if we were to spend a little bit of time us drinking a beer, you with a fizzy water at the D2 conference. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. So I just, and, and with that, we... before we go, I just say that, you know, a couple of people made comments that they were saying thanks, you know, for, for being here and have fantastic talk. And it was very calming, which was something we need right now. That's what uh, Milan said. So I, that's a nice, oh, that's good. I think that's a nice, uh, a nice gesture. Yeah. Well, it's been lovely seeing you guys. Let's um You too, Matthew. Press the button. <laughs> Thanks again. Matthew, Matthew, if people want to get in touch with you, where can they find you? Um, they can find me. They can um find me at my email address, which is you could you could find me at Matthew at dbox.com. You could find me on my Instagram, my personal Instagram. And that's at the beautiful fear, which we have uh, on the screen yeah. right now. You can see it. So, yeah. so Matthew, hang on. We're going to stop the stream uh, and then we'll okay, cool. say goodbye thanks. to you. But uh, thanks, everyone, thanks for joining. Thanks for taking the time, man. Yeah, Matthew, thank yeah, you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Cheers. Okay. So we'll see you for the next one. Good everybody. night, guys. Bye.